Hello and welcome to Trains and Dioramas. I'm your host Gustav Chatterjee and today I'll talk about painting and weathering in episode 2 of The Barge, my intensive scratch building project. In episode 1, I showed how I turned a plain sheet of styrene and some styrene strips and rods into a detailed miniature vessel. Today I'll show you how I turned that elvish white vessel into a dirty, gritty, neglected and overall an ugly old barge. There will be a lot of painting and weathering and many tips, tricks and techniques, so grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the show. First I needed a handle to hold the barge while painting it. For this, I put some blue tack on top of a wooden dowel and then press the barge firmly on it. The bond is strong enough for a usable handle that I can remove as and when required. To prime the surface, I used MIG One-Shot Black Primer. I took a plastic pipette to transfer required quantity to my airbrush. Then I kept the pressure at 25 psi and started turning white into black. I wanted a three color scheme for the barge. Black combing, dull gray deck and topside hull, and pale orange underwater hull. I started with the deck and the hull, so I used 6mm Tamiya masking tape to cover the combing. I rolled some masking tape on the toothpick and then covered the tiny bits and bollards as well. To protect the inside of the hull, I used 1 inch carpenter's masking tape to cover the hatches. These tend to peel off paint, so I didn't put them directly on the primed combing surface. I chose a custom light grey mix that I made earlier as the base coat. That grey was a little too light since I made it to paint trees. So in order to make it suitable for this project, I added a little bit of Mars Black and some raw sienna to the mix. I also added more airbrush medium to thin the paint and then mixed everything well. To start painting, first I reattached the handle and then transferred a little bit of paint in the airbrush cup. I put the pressure at 25 psi and tried the paint on a scrap piece of styrene first. Once I was satisfied, I started painting the barge. Next I started with the inside of the hatch. I opened the masking tape cover so that the hold is now exposed and covered the deck with more masking tape so that the paint on the deck is protected. I decided to use reddish brown, a shade I use to do rust effect, a mix that I made using raw sienna and Indian red. Once the paint dried, I removed all the masking tapes. There was some leakage on the combing, however given this is a shade of rust, I had no concerns. If anything, this would just add to the weathering effect. Due to the nooks and crannies in the combing, the paint on the deck near the combing needed some finishing touches. I used a flat brush and the same airbrush paint to carefully cover up the remaining small places. Because I was using a relatively larger brush and the paint was thin, the random application of paint on the deck created a more realistic, aged look. Next I took my ultra detail 2x0 brush from Raphael and sharpened all edges between the combing and the deck. Once done, I started with some paint chipping effect on the inside of the combing, the edges and the center beam. I took semi-dried black paint and brushed on top of the rust color. This gives the effect the rust is chipping through the paint. Notice that by this time I already decided to cover one hatch and another hatch would be 80% covered in grain, so I didn't necessarily have to spend time painting the inside of the hatches. However, I took the opportunity to experiment as well as to showcase some painting and weathering techniques. To paint the underwater hull, first I took the 6mm Tamiya masking tape and covered 6mm from the deck. I decided to use Humbrol Matte 61 for the underwater hull paint, basically matte flesh color. I took a hard bristle flat brush to start applying the paint in rapid vertical stroke. This served two purposes. It separated the underwater hull from the topside hull and added the streaking effect at the same time. Once the paint dried, I removed the masking tape that revealed the final look. 
it was time to start weathering. I started with green algae along the waterline. I picked up Humbrol 155 and 102, basically greenish grey and olive green. I took a soft bristle brush and took a very little amount of paint on tip and started applying along the waterline. Generally, whenever I start a weathering process, I keep chanting, less is more, that keeps me from overdoing weathering. Also, notice that I paid extra attention so that the application is random and not evenly distributed. Next, I picked up unbleached titanium, flat grey and marsh black. I studied quite a few old vessels to get an understanding of the generic scheme of weathering. I started with white that simulates streaking of dust that you see in dry cargo vessels. I semi-dried the paint on a hard bristle brush and applied them in rapid vertical strokes. I applied a little more than what I actually needed. Then before the paint get a chance to fully dry, I took a paper towel and swiped horizontally to remove the excess. These horizontal strokes with the paper towel will simulate scratches and dust deposit in them. Now to blend the paints well and to show random chipping effect and material deposit, I took another wet brush and removed most of the semi-dry paint. Once done with the white, I took a little bit of grey and very little black and repeated adding more shades. Note that with the darker shades, I mixed a bit of water to thin the paint so that the black doesn't overpower everything else. This also turned the striking white into a dull, pale, greyish white, which is accurate for the scene. Weathering and chipping on the combing would be a little different than the hull since streaking on the combing wouldn't be as much as it is on the hull. I took a small piece of discarded makeup sponge and dabbed a little bit of all three colors to make a blend in the sponge itself. Dried it on a paper and started dabbing it on the combing. I also used the same method to add dust and grime on the deck. Then I took a soft bristle brush and very little wet black paint like a thick wash and applied over the white on the combing and the deck. This created the effect of paint chipping as well as poor painting job where the surface was painted without fully removing the corrosion underneath, a common effect in an aged small vessel that receives bare minimum maintenance. To create semi-wet effect on the deck, I took a little bit of water and some black paint on my soft bristle flat brush and applied randomly on the deck. Notice that in the slanting portion of the deck, I put more paint at the bottom of the slant and more water on the top to simulate flow of water from top to bottom and deposit of material at the heel of the slope. Given the hatch rest bars, the edge of the combing and the center beams received stray paint marks, I decided to give it another thorough finishing of black and redefine the edges. The paints underneath in some areas added to the chipping, dust, and material deposit effects. Next paint I picked up was Humbrol Matte 62. Finally, the time had come to start with the rust effect, something that I was eagerly waiting for all this while. I'll start with light rust accumulation on the surface. I tore a small piece from a discarded makeup sponge and used the irregular side to dab a little bit of paint on it. Dried it about 80 to 90% by dabbing against a paper and then I dabbed the remaining on the combing. Once both the hatch combings were done, I started with the bollards and the bits before moving on to the edges of the hull. Notice that I'm putting a little bit more paint on the edges than the combing because compared to the combing, the edges of the hull would be exposed to more water, hence more rust. Finally, I moved on to the deck, applied a little bit each time randomly to create a realistic with the rust added, see how the color started popping. Next is rust streaking. For this, I took some paint on a flat hard bristle brush, dried it by brushing on a piece of paper and then applied on the hull in rapid vertical strokes. Notice that I'm starting at the edge of the hull and stroking downwards so that more paint is applied at the joints and less on the vertical strokes. Joints are where rust is formed and then water makes the streaks.
I got my tester's rust color enamel stain to add rust at the join between the brackets and the coning. The application was very simple. Take some paint on tip of a size 0 round brush and touch at the top of the join. As soon as the paint touches the surface, it automatically flows through the crevices, a convenient conjuring trick of viscosity and gravity. For any other model, I would have wiped the excess off, but for this unfortunate part, I just blended any blotch with the rest of the weathering. I continued adding the stain in all joints, including the base of the bits and the bollards. Till now, I kept on neglecting a small detail the manhole hatch cover. I painted it flat black with red handle and hinges. Then I used a drop of super glue and glued it in its designated place. For an old barge, I missed an important detail, overplating repair patches. However, it's not too late, so I'd cut a few small pieces of carpenter's masking tape that you saw me using for masking earlier. The pieces varied in size, but were either square or rectangles. I stuck them in different places using a pair of tweezers. I used flat black to paint these plates and then I used Humbrol 62 to add rust effect and plane these repair patches to the surrounding surfaces. Burnt Umber is the next paint I introduced to the rust family. This dark brown tone is to show aged, serious rust effects. Notice that I'm using very little of this paint. The brush is almost dry and it just adds a hint of dark brown. Less is more. That's my mantra. Though the inside of the hatch will not be visible a lot, the edge of the forehatch will be visible. Now to simulate grain dust on the inside wall and the hatch wrist bars, I took raw sienna and yellow ochre dry pastels and rubbed in on the inside wall. Mixed it well with my finger to give that dusty effect, then used a hard bristle brush to brush off the excess and stray powder. It's time to turn styrene into metal using a 6B pencil, the height of alchemy. Most used vessels will have constant rubbing on the edges, which would essentially not only remove the paint from the edges, but would also polish it shiny. To bring that effect, I just rubbed the 6B pencil on all the edges, paying special attention towards the areas where friction will be more, like the hatch rest bars, the center beam, and the bits and the bollards. That fine shine of graphite also gives an illusion of metal and makes the model even more convincing. When held against the light, notice how light reflects on the thin edges only at particular angles, just like the real thing. I got my tester's dull coat lacquer to seal everything so that handling the model doesn't ruin all these efforts. After all, I still had a lot of work left on this. I left the model to dry overnight. What's next? Scenic Rust by Deluxe Materials. Did you think that I'm done already? Oh no, I'm just getting started for the real transformation. Real Rust. The package consists of three containers. Scenic Rust Powder, Scenic Rust Binder, and Scenic Rust Developer. First, I used a spatula to pour some powder in a cup. Both were supplied in the package. Then I used the supplied pipette to add roughly the same amount of binder. Mix thoroughly till I got a paste-like consistency. I took a discarded brush and started applying. The chemical produces serious corrosion, so I focused on all the joints that have most chances of being corroded. I was cautious again not to overdo it, however, after all, I'm making a model, so I took the liberty to exaggerate the quantity slightly in certain areas where it makes sense, like the overplating patches, hull joints, the edge of the deck, basically areas that receive more stress and will be more susceptible to corrosion. On the deck, I've put the mix at the bottom of the slopes of the foredeck and poop deck. Water accumulates more there, hence the area is more prone to rust. As the binder cures, the powder sets firmly wherever applied. The rust developer is a liquid, so I took a soft bristle brush and started applying the chemical on the rust powder. This chemical accelerates the rust development. Overnight, the powder corrodes to create realistic rust effect. 
Once I thoroughly applied the chemical on all the areas where I put the rust powder, I called it a day and left the chemicals to do their job. Next morning, I saw that the rust developed on the surface very nicely. All the joints where I applied the chemical looks rightly corroded. However, the color of the rust didn't develop as I had hoped based on my previous experience. So I decided to get my Humbrol 62 and started accentuating the rust deposit. I'm using my Raphael 2x0 detail brush to control the quantity. As I started applying this light rust color, the rust effect started popping and the model just started looking awesome. Notice that since the corrosion surface is uneven, I'm smudging the paint with my finger in some places to blend it. Once done with the light rust color, I took some burnt umber and accentuated the heavy rust effect, which is what you expect to see in heavy corrosion areas like these. The weathering on the barge is finally complete. I'm very happy with the results so far, and I believe I achieved what I set out to do. So what is your favorite weathering technique? Do you use specialized weathering products, or do you prefer art supplies? Is there any specific type of weathering technique that you want me to make a video about? Let me know in the comments below. And before you go, this is not the end of the road for this barge. Make sure to keep your eyes open for episode 3 where I will be showing some extreme detailing on this barge before I install it in its designated place on the layout. Till then, have fun making miniatures.